can see. Can see, huh? Um, can anyone hear, everyone hear me? I think I need to do a, a voice check first to make sure the sound is okay. Can, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, because Sayani is not here today, I'm going to take my own sweet time and then slowly talk about stuff. Basically, I'm going to talk about this blog post that I wrote. Um, it's everything I know about responsive typography. I'm just going to start with the super basic stuff that I know of in the past. So in the past, like when, when we do responsive, too small or too small? Better? Better? Okay. So in the past, right, when I did responsive typography, what I would do is just like that. And all the P H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, P, all that other stuff. And if you, if you can imagine if you get one at one breakpoint, this is going to be very, very problematic. Uh. So I learned a lot about typography after I started for a long, after I started um, developing for websites. And then things like, oh, uh, vertical rhythms, um, relative units, uh, typography scales, and all that stuff will come in. And the, the question then becomes, how do you put all these big concepts and then implement it in your own CSS? So this talk is all about this part. So the first practice is to increase the font size and line height of your body as your screen size increases. What this means is that, let's imagine you have a phone here, right? Normally, you're, when you read on a phone, eh? I have a phone, am I using my wallet? <laughs> you have a phone here. So when you read, you're you are like this close to the screen. But on the desktop, you can already see that I'm already so far away from the screen. So the basic idea is that the same font size on your phone is going to be smaller than the same font size on the screen because it's further away. So 18 pixels on here might look just, like, just nice, but 18 pixels on here will be quite bad. And 18 pixels from your place to here is going to be real bad, for example. That's just one of the, that's the whole principle behind it. So what this means is that you probably have to write something like that. You have to change the, the font size as you go along. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste it in here. Boom. So as you resize the screen, the font size changes. Something like that. Can you see a difference? Or is it too small? This, screen, this resolution is like shit. Yeah, something like that. So that's the first part. That's the first practice I learned. Then you might also want to change the line, line height of your copy as your screen increases because like this line height might be a bit too tight, so you have to start adding line heights to these areas, for example. And then, of course, it will be responsive, so it gets bigger, things like that. It will cascade to the bigger size. Then, the second practice quickly ramps up in difficulty because we are, we are going to use a modular scale for typography. Modular scale, if you are not familiar with, it's this thing called um, it's a, set of, it's a set of numbers, so let's say I have a base of 16 pixels. Then you can see that this is my base over here. Then the next number will be a ratio of 1.5 times the previous number, 1.5 times the previous number, 1.5 times the previous number, and so on and so forth. So using a modular scale allows you to keep your typography relative to each other. So there's some sort of consistency and it's easier to read for the users as they go through their, the, your website. The problem with using modular scale is, well, you start off with a simple implement implementation like this if you're using pixels. 16 pixels with 50, 37, 28. But as you go, if you combine the second, this one with the one pre that we have before, then it starts to get a bit ugly because when you change the pixels, you have to start adding new pixel sizes. So the next part then is to use relative units because with relative units, we don't have to write as many of this uh, media breakpoints over here. So all of this can be reduced to just one. 
So relative units are like EM and REM units, like EM and REM. Most people, there, there's still a big debate going on about EMs and REM, so I'm not going to talk about this today. What I'm more focused on is how do you get the vertical typograph, the, 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 the relative, the modular scale for your typography working well. So then it becomes something similar to this, right? Like you have the media queries in your base HTML, then you can just set like H1, H2, H3 to be a specific EM size. Then it cascades properly. So let's say if I copy this, I'm just going to be lazy, copy and paste. And maybe let's see. So it kind of, it, it already allows, it already reflows without us having to like play around with it a lot. So that's one good thing about adding the media query to the HTML element as opposed to adding it to like the H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 elements. So it keeps all your sizing relative to one place and when it changes, everything else changes. Of course, we also don't want to, sometimes, um, we don't want to put the font size as pixels because it messes around with uh, the user's browser setting and stuff like that. So we want to put 100% instead. Like 16 pixels is 100% by default. But if they change their browser width, it might not be 16 pixels anymore. So it will be 100% default to whatever pixels they have set. It's just a better practice as opposed to using pixels. So I'm just going to change it. Okay, so it's going to be about the same thing. Yeah, this is just like my demo there. Uh, so notice that sometimes, right, the font sizes might become too big. Like this might have, the, the top CSS here might be a bit too big sometimes, or depending on your design. Then you might want to tone it down one scale, since you're using um, uh, modular scales, right? So if we're going to tone it down one scale, we have to find out what's the previous um, reps. So if we're going to turn H1 down to H2, then we have to start writing code like, like this. At a certain media breakpoint, you're going to change the font size down to the H2 one, which is this one. Then, that if, if this happens in your design, then, it, then it doesn't really help to put the media query back in the HTML because then again you're writing media queries everywhere you go. So because of this problem that I had, right, I came up with this uh, library called Typey. Uh, you can find it on my GitHub, it's zlwk slash typey. So I wrote this up a few and put it up a few weeks ago. How you use typey is generally is, whoa, my, my thing is getting stuck. Okay. My alternate tab is stuck. Damn it. Oh, my keyboard hung. Oh, oh shit. Technical difficulties, my keyboard has hung. Yeah, I'm just going to plug this out for a while. <laughs> we don't have a dead air screen now. Okay. So how you use this type key library is that you have to start with a SAS map. So this is all this is all SAS. If you are not using SAS, I'm I'm sorry you can't use this library. Unless you want to write it and then port it over to like less or stylus or whatever. That's up to you. How you use it is that you have a no a now map. You you begin with a type key map. So now will be without the breakpoints. Say so this will be 16 pixels. You can also set the line height optionally if you want to, like 1.5, like this. Then the next one will be, for every other breakpoint that you have, you can add it to as a map. What Typey does is it, it will look for a breakpoints map, and then you'll find that 
number for you. So like say something like that. So at 600 pixels, we are going to change it to 24 pixels, for example. Then what you do from this point is that HTML include type E base. So let me just refresh this and then uh, what? Did I overwrite something? Let me see. Hmm. Maybe I should present with code pen, but code pen doesn't have this. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Error on my part. So like, then you can see just with this two, 16 pixels and 24 pixels, is, it's going to break at 600 pixels and then it's just going to change the breakpoint without having you write so much. If you look at the CSS code, uh, there's a little bit of a boilerplate here because I'm using my own stuff. But if you look at it, you can see that So just with setting the base pixels at 16, you get a font size of 100 pixels because 100 is 16. And then at a medium of 24 pixels, it automatically calculate for you the minimum width and then reset your font size for you. So this is like the basic part on working on the body copy. Then the next thing comes in that we have like H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6, right? So H1. H1 map can be something like that. Um, I think previously we had a font size of, let's say 3.5 EM, no, 2 EMs. And then medium is 3.5 EM, for example. What, we, what you have to do to call this is H1 and include type E then you pass in the H1 map. Uh, do I have any problems again? So this would just change automatically again. If you look at the code, for the H1, it's also pretty similar. Font size 2 EM and font size 3.5 EMs. Like, what I mentioned, what, what, one thing I realized when coding is, is that when you have very different fonts, the line height and the line spacing of your, your heading elements will definitely change a lot. Different fonts require different line spacing. So it's very common that your H1 spacing w shouldn't be 1.5, for example. So then you can use the same format as the Type E one, switch it to 1.2. For example, let me just change this to a longer screen. Like if I don't have 1.2 here, it's going to be, well, this, this spacing is probably going to be too big. As you go up or down the size, you might want to change the spacing a little bit to make it more readable, or maybe even one. So doing this usually on a normal CSS file is going to take ages if you have like a lot of font sizes to play around with. So this is one way to make it easier for you. So you can, you can apply it to like H2 and H3, for example. So this is all blah, 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 blah. The next one is to apply vertical rhythms. So that's a separate practice by itself. Um, to start off, maybe we can talk about what is vertical rhythms first. So vertical rhythms is the space between your text elements. So if you take a look, um, like, okay. So if you take a look at this paragraph over here, right? This, the, the space between this paragraph and this paragraph, the, 
inner ones, inner parts over here refers to the vertical spacing. So what vertical rhythm hopes to achieve if you if you apply vertical rhythms is that your spacing should be relative to the line height of your body copy. So as you read through the whole thing, it kind of, mm, okay, it's not too bad, it doesn't fly away, and the spacing isn't awkward, so the users can read properly. So let me just do a margin zero reset first. This is kind of like how it looks like without margins. I also have this. Yeah, okay. This, this is all margin reset, so don't worry about this code. So as you can see, the, the margins isn't like very well done up over here so far. What vertical rhythm says is that, let's say for H1, you might want a vertical rhythm of, um, one, let's say 1.5. So because our base size is 1.5, the vertical rhythm will be 24 pixels. So something like that. And then you can do a multiple of 24 pixels, so maybe three times. Three times might be a bit too much, so two times. So it, it gives you a, a rough indication of like what a good rhythm is. Then maybe a paragraph, a bottom of 24 pixels. Or in the H2, margin top of 48 pixels as well. So it looks, it, it starts to flow nicer. Like this is two times the height of this, so it flows properly. And then H3, margin top of um, 48 pixels, 24 pixels, and maybe a margin bottom of 12 pixels, for example. So this is kind of like how it all goes around. Like, then you can see that this is definitely a H2 element. It has more hierarchy. It has more spacing compared to the next one, which is probably a H3 one. So it gives, it gives a very good typographical flow towards the text content on your site. And that's all about vertical rhythms. And then as you can see, the code starts to get a bit messy. We have a lot of uh, margin bottom, margin top, and then we have a lot of various pixels littered around. If you're going to convert it into EMs, it's going to be like a shit mess because if you use H1, if you try doing two Ms, it will be like, Oh my god, if you use RAM, it's kind of like easier because 48 pixels is, no, not 2 RAMs. 48 pixels is 16 times 1.5 times 2. So that's going to be 3 RAMs. Ah, okay, I think maybe I got my calculations off now. So the thing is, you have to, you have to start calculating the vertical rhythms, which is a shitload of work. So what I did is that <coughs> inside Type E, I added this VR, which is vertical rhythm multiplier. So you can say this is one rhythm, this is two rhythm, this is three rhythms, and then so on and so forth. So instead of using 48, VR2. Oh, I think I got the calculations wrongly, but you get the point. Then maybe if 2 is too big, then maybe 1 or one, uh, 0 0.5, for example. So you still have that rhythm. Uh, you still have the ability to work around with rhythms easily without having to do too much calculations. So this is what Type B is used for. Uh, it's also to help you apply vertical rhythms. Uh, then there's this big debate about EM and RAM that which I'm not going to go into. Finally, the last practice I have is um, to keep the text measures between 45 and 75 characters. This is one of the things that uh, <clears throat> you don't see a lot out there on the internet and that's why when you read stuff, you have to go like <laughs> to turn your head when you read and it gets a little bit irritating. So this one is actually really, really easy. You just have to remember one character is approximately 0 0.5 EMs. So then your text, your, your text measure, meaning the width of your text, must be between 22 and 22.5 and 37.5 EMs. So if you, if you go with uh, something like P uh, max width 30 EMs, you probably not go very far off 
It's kind of like something like that. So if you start reading this lorem dollar, if you start reading this lorem text, it's not going to like go too far off the screen and then it starts getting difficult to read and things like that. So this is just one thing to keep note of. Then if you want to play around with, uh, with 30 EMs is just like, uh, <clears throat> okay, a random number. One way you can make it better is to use the vertical rhythm. So your top and your side vertical rhythms are like similar. I have no idea what the actual number is, so we can just hit. And you now hit numbers in there and see what happens. But you can, you can have a better look if you look at the... So yeah, 27 EMs. That kind of looks actually quite good. If you scroll down, it kind of flows quite well. Then there's another method to do the side-to-side -side measure, and that's to use uh, the vertical. That's to use the, the modular scale. So modular scale will be you have to start using this calculations over here, and you then just pick one nice number, and I probably I don't know. There's a uh, SAS mixin that lets you use that thing as well. It's called uh, modular scale. So MS, you can do MS6 or MS, MS whatever number that you want. So it will give the, the rhythm to the side. So this one jumps a bit too much sometimes. All right, kind of something around, it, around here is good. 18 is about 26 rem, uh, 26 EMs or 19, which is about 31. And it's kind of good to read still. It's not too far away. It's, good, it's, a, it's still a good practice to read on here. So one way I used it in my, old, in my new site design is, oh shit, uh, where's my new site design? Okay, just let me run this quickly. Okay, so this is the same post that you see as this one. Oh, uh, sorry, this one. All right. It f so the, the measures, like, if you take a look at this code block, right, you see that it juts out slightly a bit. Well, compared to the rest of, this is about 30-something EMs. This is used. This is done with the model scale. So I got the width from the, from the model scale. I think it was about 19 ms. This was 21 ms. So there's a way to make the width flow nicely with the vertical text as well. So it gets easier to read. So this is like I think three times. Then this is one times or something like that. But generally, you can you can see how it all ties in together if you want to make a site that is very type oriented. Yeah, I think that's all. Okay. Okay, thank you, Zhao. Any tough or good questions? Any questions for him? Yeah, any questions? His voice seems reasonably okay now. We've got a break in before the end of the night. Yeah. Why didn't you pass like the margin top and bottom as an argument into your typing? Well, the, the problem with passing margin top and bottom into type P is that you can't know whether you're doing margin top, margin bottom, or margin left, right, up, down, center, right? So the challenge with using type P is that the type P mix-in only works with um, fonts, so like font sizes and line heights. So that mix-in is, is used mainly for that. It does its job well. The rhythms part, well, some people may choose to use that, some people may not choose to use that. So that's like a separate module within, within Type P. Plus, you don't know how many margin tops or bottoms do you want to give. So it starts to get a bit wonky. And then sometimes you want to give left, right as well using vertical rhythm. So you can't do margin, padding, bottom, border, and all that stuff, right? At the same time. So that, that thing alone is used to calculate just the width, or just the, just the amount that you need. Any questions? Or is this too dense? <laughs>
too tight related, I think. Okay, let's move on to our next. Okay. Thank you, Zoe. Yeah.